Hi everyone, I forgot to record an intro for this video, so I'm going to let you look at my sweet little animals while I tell you what I'm going to do in this video. The main focus of this video is going to be the One Size Beauty Bronzer Trio Palette. I got the shade Fair. There are actually six shades of this palette, and I got the lightest one, so I'm going to be demoing all of the shades in that palette. I'll have some comparisons for those shades as well. And I'm also going to be demoing and reviewing the Giorgio Armani Lip Power. I have the shade 102, so I'm going to be showing you what that looks like, and I'll have a comparison for that as well. I'm also going to be doing an eye look using one of the palettes that's in my project pan, the Pat McGrath Utopian Dream palette. So if you'd like to see all of that, just keep on watching. Here's the bronzer palette. The component is actually really nice. It has this beautiful reflective red surface all over it. It has a good weight to it. It's quite large. You can see it next to my head how big it is. And these are the three shades inside. So I got the Fair palette, which was the lightest one. Those are the three shades. I'm in completely natural light today. And here they are swatched on my hand in the same order that they appear in the palette. So that's the one at top, that's the middle one, and then that's the bottom one. I would say the top one is definitely lighter. It's a fairer tone than the other two. I tried to take about the same amount of product for each of these swatches, and I found that these gave a much more immediate impact when I was swatching than the top one there. But I do think they all look like tones that are fairly appropriate for fair skin. The top one I would consider more of a yellowy undertone. It reminds me a lot of my Charlotte Tilbury in Fair, and it also reminds me of my Victoria Beckham, the lighter shade in the Fair duo of the Victoria Beckham bronzers. Uh, I'll do a couple of comparisons later on. The middle one here I would consider to be more cool toned. It definitely has a more rosy kind of feel to it. And this one I actually wore yesterday. It was the only shade from the palette that I wore. And I also put it on my eyes. I had it all over my eyelids and underneath my eyes as my only eyeshadow yesterday. And it definitely had that kind of rosy pull. It's a shade that reminds me more of something like the Gucci bronzer in Fair. So I'll do a comparison with that later on as well. And then the bottom one, I would say is more neutral. The whole idea with these palettes is that you've got a cool, a warm, and a neutral all in one palette. I'm not sure which one they're calling the cool, warm, and neutral, but to me it looks like the top one is the warm, the middle is the cool, and then the bottom one is the neutral. That's just the way they're pulling to my eye and on my skin. So the bottom one I would say almost appears like it has a little bit of an olive quality to it. Freddie has chosen to join us today. Um, I think I'm going to start with this one right here because it's the lightest. I just kind of want to see how that goes on first. And I'm going to use my Sonia G Soft Cheek. This is normally a brush that I only use for blush, but I thought that it would be a good choice for this because these do seem to be quite pigmented. The feeling of the powders when I was swatching them was incredibly soft, very, very finely milled. They felt really lovely to, to just touch with the fingertip. So I'm hoping that that will translate onto the skin as well. And I thought that the soft cheek would be good because it um, will pick up less product than something like this, which is the other brush I was considering using. This is the Wayne Goss Edit Brush 01. It's undyed goat hair, and that means it's just a little bit coarser. It's going to be a little bit better at picking up more product than something like the dyed goat hair in the soft cheek, um, which is just gonna have a little bit of a lighter application, hopefully, but I'm still tapping it off because I can see that there's a lot of pigment on it. I have my foundation and concealer on, and I did set lightly all over with powder. I used the Kosas powder today. It's a very light layer of powder, but I did wanna get just a little bit of setting down before I went in with this powder bronzer. So let's go right in with that top shade. So I'm finding with this shade at least it wasn't hard to apply, it blended really easily and it actually, because it's such a light color I think, although it's quite pigmented, it was still buildable 
and really easy to work with. So that's kind of the amount that I would probably use of that shade. And on the other cheek, I think I want to try a different shade. So I'm gonna try this middle one right here. Actually, I'll try this on the cheek. And then so we can see what this one looks like on its own as well, I'll use the bottom shade on my forehead there. But now going in with the middle shade on just the cheek. So once again, even though this is a darker shade than the first one I used, it's building really nicely. It's very easy to blend. It's not giving me too much initial impact. I like using this brush because it is softer and uh, just a little bit less intense than something like the undyed goat hair that I was considering. So there's the middle shade in the palette right there. And there's the lighter shade. I can definitely see the undertones that I see in the pans and in the swatches translating onto the skin. So now I'm gonna go into this bottom shade here. I'm wiping off my brush in between colors just so I know there's no pigment mixing in. And let's do that on the forehead. And there's the bottom shade in the palette. And again, I'm seeing the undertone coming through. I do feel that there's a little bit of kind of an olive undertone in that shade. We think that each of the shades has a distinct undertone and a distinct look on the face. And I really like that about it. I'm gonna have to see how they mix together. Before I do that, let's just take one last look at each shade on its own. So there's the top shade, middle shade, and bottom shade. So I think what I'll do to kind of try and even things out, I'll add some of this one onto this cheek, some of this one onto this cheek to balance those out, and then I'll just mix a little bit of this on top of the one that I already have on my forehead. Gonna use the bottom shade on my nose. And just kind of mixing all of them for underneath my chin. This is a heavier application of bronzer than I would normally do, but since this video is all about bronzer, I think that's okay. I really wanted to show the formula, the different colors, and the texture of it on the skin. And I think the texture of these powders is really gorgeous. It looks super smooth on the skin. And again, although I think the shades are quite pigmented, they're light enough for fair skin, in my opinion, and they're buildable enough. Obviously, it has quite an impact on my skin right now, but I've built it up in several layers with layering all the colors on top of one another and so on. So it's definitely possible to get a more subdued look from this and a more kind of natural look from it. But I think this is beautiful. I'm really happy with this. This is the, the first and only thing I've tried from one size so far. And I think this is beautiful right from the packaging to the products themselves. I'm very happy with the way that these shades are formulated. And I think it's really nice to have a bronzer palette where all the shades are basically for the same skin tone. Certainly as someone who isn't a makeup artist and I really just use my makeup on myself the vast majority of the time, for me, it wouldn't make sense to have a palette with like a light, medium, and dark bronzer all in the same palette because I know I just wouldn't wouldn't use them all on myself. So it's great to have all the different undertones just for my skin tone in one palette. And I think this is something that's gonna get a lot of use from me because not only does it have any bronzer color that I could basically want within it, but the formula is also really beautiful and easy and fun to work with. So I'm gonna go into the middle shade here on my Wayne Goss Artist Brush. This is the small size. It's a uh, blue squirrel hair, so it's extremely soft, even softer than the soft cheek brush that I use to apply the bronzer on my face. And I'm just gonna kind of do a wash of this over my eyelids. And this middle shade here, the one that I'm 
considering to be the cool tone shade in the palette. Certainly capable of behaving as a contour. I think it does give a little bit of warmth, at least on my skin, but it also has enough coolness in it that it has that ability to really sculpt and shape the face at the same time as, you know, just adding a little color. And that built very gradually on my eyes, so if you wanted an even lighter application and more buildable feel than you can get with the dyed goat hairbrush, you could use a blue squirrel hairbrush uh, on your face as well and get an even more gradual application of these powders. Something like the large Wayne Goss artist brush would be great for that. I'm gonna apply a little bit of blush now and I'll be using the Hermes Rose Poivre blush. This is in my spring project pan. I had originally chosen the rose blush shade, but I decided that this one would be better because this is more of a kind of neutral pink tone, whereas the rose blush was a very peachy tone and I already had uh, a couple of peachy blushes in my project pan. So I thought that the, the neutral pink would be a better one to include in the project and I've been enjoying it a lot, actually. I think this type of a pink color for blush can work really nicely if you perhaps have gone a little bit overboard or done a heavier application of bronzer because it has enough coolness in it to really kind of brighten things up and kind of neutralize things a little bit, but it's not too cool. It's not like the Dior Pink Glow Blush, which is almost like a purpley blue shade. That would work really well in this kind of an instance as well, but if you wanna still keep that slightly warmer feel, but still be able to kind of neutralize the look a little bit, something like a neutral pink like this is really nice. I forgot that I wanted to do my little lip sculpting with this palette as well. So I'm taking my Sonia G Soft Definer brush from the Lotus set. And I think I'll go into this bottom shade here to do that little bit of a lip contour. So now that that's done, I'm just gonna go finish up my hair and then I'm gonna come back. I'll do an eye look. I'm gonna use the Pat McGrath Utopian Dream. This is another one that's in my spring project pan. And so I wanna use that for my eyes today. And then once I'm finished that, I'm gonna show you this on the lips. This is my new Armani lipstick. It's the Lip Power in the shade 102, which I really love. I talked about this in my recent haul video and I'm really excited to show it to you on my lips in this video. For the eyes, my idea was to use this one here as my main shade. This is the multi-chrome shade. I'm not sure if it's showing the shift very well there, but hopefully we'll be able to see that shift better when it's on my eyes. So I'm gonna put that all over my lids. And then I was thinking maybe I'd top it off with one or both of these astral shades.
I finished off the eye look with the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara. This is the green one. Just trying to kind of pull on the green tones in that multi-chrome that I used on my eyes. I pulled out the ring light to show you the final eye look, so it'll hopefully show up all the shifts in color and the beautiful glittery topper that I used. And now for the lips. So as I said, this is the Armani Lip Power in the shade 102. I think the name of the shade is Romanza or Romanza. That's what the color looks like in the bullet. I turn the ring light off now and let's get it on the lips. Here's what that shade looks like on the lips. As I mentioned in my haul video when I was talking about this, this is about the lightest I can go for a lip color without needing a liner with it. And I'm really happy with this shade. I feel like this is a shade I've been looking for for a long time. I'm gonna do a couple of comparisons with it, but I really don't have anything else that's quite like this. I love the lightness of it while still being wearable on its own. The texture is beautiful. It really glides on. It's a very smooth satin kind of balmy feel when it first goes on, but I do find that it kind of sets down a little bit after just a few minutes and it wears incredibly well, especially for a light color like this. I find this type of a color usually doesn't last very long on the lips. And even this type of a formula that goes on feeling more satiny and balmy usually is not a type of color that's going to last a long time on the lips. But because this does feel like it sets down a little bit, the feel of it does change a little bit as it sets down. It just feels a little bit less kind of balmy and moisturizing. But to me, it doesn't feel drying at all. And it still has a little bit of a kind of glide to it, even when it sets down and, and dries a little bit. And once it does that, it really lasts very well. I've worn this through a whole meal and it's actually lasted through the meal. It's come off a little bit, but um, the color stays on there and you wouldn't even necessarily need to reapply it after eating if you didn't want to. It will, as I said, have a little bit less of a color impact but it's still going to be there. Because of how well this formula wears and how much I like it, it has no scent either, which is a big plus to me. Um, I, it's the kind of formula that I'd be tempted to be looking into other shades and, you know, kind of wanting to buy all the shades of it. But I'm so thrilled with this shade that I almost feel like I don't need to get any other ones because I'm so happy with the way this shade looks and how it works. I think it works beautifully when you want a color on your lips, but you just don't want it to have too much of a presence. You don't want it to take over the look. You don't want it to interfere with any of the other makeup that you have going on, but you still want something that looks nice and refined and pretty on the lips. This color to me is just perfect. It has a little bit of warmth in it, but it definitely has a mauve quality as well, which is just so beautiful. And as I've mentioned, before, I've, I've been kind of more into that slightly more cool tone with a little hint of mauve lip lately. Not all the time, but it's something that I've been going to more often because I just think it has quite a sophisticated look to it. And this color is no exception to that. So I wanted to compare it to two other lip products that I have. One is the Victoria Beckham Posh Gloss in Bikini. This is one that I think gives a similar kind of effect and I think it's quite a similar tone, actually. We'll see once we compare them. So right here is the Victoria Beckham Posh Gloss in Bikini, and then next to it is the Armani Lip Power in 102. And then down here I have the Merit Lightweight Lipstick in Baby. So looking at these two first, because they're the most similar, I can definitely see that those shades are quite similar. I think in the swatches, Bikini looks a little bit more pink, while the Armani has maybe a little bit more of a peach influence in it, but I think that they give very similar effects. There is, of course, a difference in the, the finish of them on the lips and in how they wear. Gloss is not going to wear as long as something like this Lip Power lipstick, but they have a similar look on the lips. I do think the gloss has a glossier, shinier finish to it on the lips as well. 
well. The Armani one I first applied, I find it has more of that shine, but I think you can even see now that it's kind of set down and dried down a little bit. It's not quite as shiny as it was when I first applied it, nor is it as shiny as a gloss. But I think if you wanted this type of effect and you really wanted that nourishing feel the whole time you're wearing it, probably the gloss would be better. But if you wanted this type of effect in something that's still gonna feel very comfortable on the lips, um, but is going to wear a longer time and last longer on your lips, the lip power is a perfect option. And then Baby is just darker. It's a, it's a richer color. It's not gonna look as light and nude on the lips, but it has similar undertones in it. So I wanted to make sure to show that to you as well. So just to quickly do the bronzer comparisons for the top shade in the um, one size palette, that's it right there. This one here is the lighter shade in the Victoria Beckham Fair Bronzer Duo, that one right there. And then the last one here is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in the shade Fair. So once they're swatched, I think they all actually have a different look to them. I would say the one size is the most pigmented. The Victoria Beckham would be the second most pigmented with the Charlotte Tilbury being the least pigmented among the three. I can see some differences in the undertones here. This one looks more yellow. That's the Victoria Beckham one. This one looks a little bit more kind of peachy. That's the Charlotte Tilbury. And then the one size looks I think it looks also peachy, but it has a little bit more pink in it actually than these other two. Then here we have the middle shade in the one size palette compared to the Gucci bronzer in Fair. I think these ones actually look more similar than the last group of comparisons. Although I would say that the Gucci has a little bit more red in it, a little bit more pinky red. I do think they still have basically the same undertones though. And I actually found that the Gucci was more pigmented than the one in the one size. And finally here we have the bottom shade in the one size trio. This one here is the Dior Forever Matte Bronzer in the shade 04, uh, tan bronze, this one right here. And then the third swatch here is the darker shade from that Victoria Beckham duo. As I mentioned, I feel that uh, this bottom shade in the one size bronzer has a little bit of an olive undertone. And that's something that I've kind of thought about the Dior as well. And I do stand by that, but I think that looking at these, I can see a lot more of that olive actually in the one size. To me, that looks a lot more kind of green in undertone than these other two. I think the depths are similar, but I definitely think that these two here actually are a little bit rosier than this one, which to me is looking definitely the most greeny olive of this little trio here. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I always love to see those. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd love for you to do so. Thanks again so much. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.